Coming to you live from the Pensado Theater at the all-new SAE Los Angeles campus, Pensado's Place is brought to you by Vintage King, The Blackbird Academy, Audio Technica, Aftermaster, Isotope, Studio 202 DC, Avid, and The Recording Connection. The dog joins us for the Pensado Awards. It's got him barking. We got news from Nashville. Our guest has super helpful info that you can use. And of course, a brand new ITL. Crank it up. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Uh, the newest episode of the Herb and Dave Show is coming your way. So much to talk about. Thanks for joining us, guys. Herb, um, you've been racking up some uh, frequent flyer miles this, this month, huh? A little bit, a little Good bit. Good stuff, I hope. Yeah, a lot going like on. Like I don't and, know. <laughs> um, and nothing like being caught in a line of thunderstorms and being delayed. No. I was delayed for four hours yesterday in Chicago. We couldn't move, and then we flew through the storm. But that's another story. Um, all good stuff. Should we get to it? We let's got a lot do it. Let's do it. I can't wait to hear what's going on. Hey, gang, are you good? We certainly hope so. Tensions running high around here, last minute details and arrangements, everybody scrambling to deliver. For those of you coming, we look forward to seeing you. For those folks who are making this possible for all of you, we're internally grateful. Those folks are Vintage King, The Blackbird Academy, Audio Technica, Aftermaster, Isotope Recording Connection, Studio 202 DC, and Avid. Here are a bunch of other incredible sponsors who have stepped up. Look at this title card. Those are best in class type folks. Each and every one. If you get a chance, go support them. Yes. By now, you have all the details. Sunday, August 30th, Sony Movie Lot, four location, all your heroes. Couple of updates. Randy Jackson, the dog, is joining us as host. That means he, along with CLA, Young Guru, Sylvia Massey, and Justin Meldell Johnson are going to be there. Go to PensadoAwards.com, see the list of presenters, see the superstars, get some hotel information, location and times, there's still some very decent tickets left. I just advise you to go fast because in a minute that boy's going to shut down. Party time afterwards, booties bumping, mascara melting. That's our mantra. Mixmaster Mike and Young Guru on the ones and twos. Ladies bring the heat. I've been hearing a lot about dress buying and hair getting done. Men do the same. Pick out your dress and get your hair done too. <laughs> well, don't get a dress unless that's your thing. But if that's your thing, go on and do it. But do tune it up. Make it hot. Make it sexy. It's going to be a thing, and we want to see you there. Now, some additional news. If you can't make it to the Pensado Awards, how about this? Da 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 da. da. Make it to Gear Expo Nashville. That's right. Oh. It's time for the third annual Pensado Gear Expo. We do that in conjunction with our Vintage King family and it's an outdoor boogie blast for you. Here's the date, September 26th in Nashville, Tennessee. Loads of gear, loads of prizes. Here's some panels for you. A very informative panel on social media led by our social media guru, Will Thompson, a bunch of us, um, and you're gonna learn how to further your business. An all women's panel with some amazing ladies. We're gonna do a panel on live sound and where the jobs are from the pros who do it. An engineer and producers panel. There will be specialists from Audio Technica to answer any of all your miking needs, a bunch of other brands to assist you. And if you're an aspiring DJ, if you've got some skills, if you want to show them off, we're going to have a little contest for you. I'm not going to tell you about that yet. we got some details to settle. But get your buns ready to come up there. If you're really good, wicka, 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 you're going to have an opportunity wicka, wicka, wicka. to show something. So uh, more on all that next week. Here's what you can do in the interim. Go to GearExponational.com. Sign up now. This is free. Students from all over the Southwest, Midwest are coming to this thing. We want to see you there. It's going to be absolutely fantastic and it's big for you. But that's not all because the Master Blaster here, Dave Pensado, will be heading down a week early to head up the Blackbird session. You can see it on this card right there. See all that? Last year when they did that, it was a sold out group of people that got the chance to learn. You can see the dates. It's one week before Gear Expo. Sign up if you want. Hit karma at karma at blackbirdacademy.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, it's an opportunity for you to learn from one of the all-time greats in one of the all-time great studios. They want me to come down and speak early. Cole, I think, is going to come down. And if you get there, we can hang out and go grab some hot chicken from Hattie's, right? You know what? Um, 
don't mean to interrupt, but the, the last one we did, we still get together and, and, and see how each other are doing by Skype and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a way of bonding and, and, and what better way to do it than to talk about this thing we love. And yeah. I had more fun and learned more than anybody. I got to tell you, her. And it's, it could not be a better environment. You yeah. know, it's, it, it's a, yeah. it costs something, but there's a lot of value that you get out of it. And it's I agree. With you and, um, so we're, we're excited to... Um, I paid for my way already. <laughs> or I've worked out something. Oh. Um, but uh, so a lot going on. The Pensado Awards, Gear Expo Nashville, the Blackbird Sessions, and I think actually we're staying over to speak to the new Blackbird class, which starts the day after Gear yeah, Expo. Yeah, that'll be fun too. So from here on, man, we're, be, we're gonna be banging. So this week a little bit different. You, you took an idea and then it morphed into really the show. Is that what happened? Yeah, we started out uh, intending to do a, a tight, compact into the lair, but there was so much information it grew into a show. Oh, cool. So it's kind of a combined thing, I guess. What's the context of the show? Well, I've always, there's a couple of plugins and it's the new, new technology and plugins where you just to get rid of the, the full usage of the plugin, you have to do a couple of synthesizer techniques. And mm. so we're explaining how that works. Oh, cool. Let's roll it. Hey guys, thanks for coming and hanging out with me. Um, lately I've been noticing that more and more plugins for engineers, why did I say engineers? Because we're gonna do some synthesizer uh, explanations today, but for engineers. I'm not teaching how to program synthesizers. Uh, well, Apu is not teaching you how to uh, program synthesizers. We're, we, I asked him to come by and show us some basic synthesizer concepts that I keep running across in plugins like like Timeless 2, like like FabFilter Micro, even Echo Boy. When you go to the tweak mode, there's all sorts of things, ADSRs and and resonance and, and all these things that I think it's time that us engineers kind of got these as part of our tool set. So Apu's taking the time to show us. Apu's a, fr a close friend of mine. We shared a studio space for a long time, um, and um, Thanks for coming by, my friend. Thank you, dear. Thanks for having um, me. Apu, in case you're not familiar with him, um, Apu Krishnan, uh, his, 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 uh, his producer name is The Professor, uh, <laughs> and that he is, and that's why I invited him, because he, he, he knows his stuff. He's a producer, writer, uh, musician, uh, teaches, and let's just jump right in. Now, I want you to understand, this isn't a course. This isn't everything you need to know about synth programming. This is enough to get us by. Uh, so like if we're working with Timeless 2 from Fab Filter and we, we click the bottom tab, and we'll know what all that stuff is. Now, you have to practice this and you have to go a little deeper. Apu, what, what um, you're an engineer as well as a producer. Uh, am, am, I, um, am I correct in, in saying that um, these things are creeping more and more into plugins, right? I Absolutely. didn't notice this like five years ago. Absolutely. It seems like it seems like plugin manufacturers expect us to know all these terms, yeah. <laughs> like oscillator and resonance yeah. and X Y and yeah. and um, on and on and on. Where do you want to start? Well, I think. Hey guys, by the way, um, I think we should start with like basics of synthesis okay. because. Once we understand sound and how it's processed in a synthesizer, mm -hmm. it's actually not that hard. Then we can understand the plugins more and okay. we can use them more creatively. You okay, know? let's do it. It's, so, uh, the show is yours. I'm going to back off here a little bit out of, cool. the, out of the picture. And <laughs> Thanks, Dave. If you hear me yelling in the background... I'm, I'm making something wrong. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but uh, anyway, guys, um, all synthesizers, I should ch say like 95% of them have five main elements. The first one is the oscillator, which we all know makes sound, right? On a synth, you can choose different waveforms to make the sound that you want. And then you have something called See, the- what? You do the, you name the, the sound and I'll, 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 I'll hum it. Okay. <laughs> so sine wave. <laughs> Square wave. <laughs> Should I say white noise? <laughs> What is that kind of pain? <laughs> Salt. There you go. Sawtooth. We need a razor or something. Well, Sawtooth would be a violin. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, pulse. 
when do we, do we, do we get square? It's, uh, square and pulse are same. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Okay. <laughs> I'm shooting this, right? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Are we going to edit that BP or are we only. Oh, God. Okay. He's leaving it in. Okay. <laughs> so um, we have the oscillator waveforms. They go through a section called the filter section, which, as audio people, we know what the filter does. I'm not going into details of it. Basically, the filter has just two main parameters one is the frequency called the cutoff frequency, and then you have something called resonance. Uh, let me just show you a filter, simple one called micro, where you can just see the resonance. So this one's fab filter micro. You can see I've selected a low pass filter here, and this is the frequency, which it sweeps, and then Peak or resonance, by the way, resonance is also, you know, called peak, is right here. So I'm giving, like, my cutoff a little bump up mm -hmm. right where it is. So it kind of accents it, makes it a little funky. There's a million uses for it. Can so. you can you control the, the peak the way it moves and stuff with other elements? I know I'm getting advanced now, but you can you don't have to keep it static. It can be... No, absolutely. Okay, you can so move we'll get to it, that. you know. Okay. If I were to automate, I can just... Okay. like that and if I had sound in there it would sound more like you know like a howling sine wave like okay. almost like a guitar feedback will would come it be in. a little bit like a wah wah yeah definitely okay. it's funkability in a filter is resonance yeah it's okay. like a wah wah really um, so that's a filter and uh, we have different kinds of filters low pass high pass band pass band reject and all the crazy ones after the filter we have an amplifier just like our VCAs, you know. So the amplifier is voltage controlled or nowadays digitally controlled. So you can, uh, you know, control the output level using mm -hmm. various things. And those various things, I'm gonna put them in a box called modulators. Okay. Because Dave, you explained, you know, talked about modulation, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Right? So there's two kinds of modulators mostly. One is based on envelopes, and this second one is based on LFOs. Can you say the envelope one, the LFO I got, you take a, a low frequency mm -hmm. tone, like it can be two, three, four, five, ten mm -hmm. cycles, and as that tone, which can be a sine wave or a square yes. wave, moves up and down, exactly. it gives you a tremolo effect if it's mm -hmm. pretty fast, and yeah. if not, it just gives you a Exactly. Okay, so how does an envelope control a Envelope, I like to think about it as the life of sound. So uh, a normal envelope has like four stages. It's got attack, decay, sustain, and release. Okay. Which means traditionally on a synthesizer, the moment you hit the key or note on is the attack stage. And then when you hold it down, it's called a sustain stage. When you release it, it's the release, right? So then sound dies. So between the attack and the sustain, the sound can kind of change. Normally, it kind of falls down in value. Let's say if it's volume, I would say it goes up and stays there for a bit, and then it dies down, okay. right? Okay. So that's what the envelope is, and you can assign it to any parameter you want. Okay. Is that what I'm getting uh, Yeah, at, right? I got you. But, but an envelope can be other things than, than, oh, absolutely. than attack. Okay. Absolutely. So you have those two as modulators, and you can assign these two things to the first three things. On the oscillator, it con uh, controls the pitch or waveform, right? Mm -hmm. On the filter, it could be peak, resonance, or cutoff frequency. And on amplifier, it's just pure volume, right? Okay. So you control the pitch, the type of sound, the brightness of sound, as well as the volume of sound. That's gotcha. pretty much so basic. If, if, if you're if you're modulating the f the frequency, that's that's called FM synthesis, right? Yes, that's correct. And if you're correct. modulating the volume, that's called AM synthesis, yes, right? Yes, that's okay. correct. Yeah. And the FM, you know, if you want to go a little bit in detail, I said ninety percent of synths at first. This kind of synthesis is called subtractive synthesis. Okay. Bob Mauk kind of started, and we okay. all kind of follow. Okay. FM can get a little bit more in deep, where these all. Oscillators are called operators, 
and we can use them to actually generate sounds too. Okay. You know? Cool. Too cool. All right. Should we jump in? To, yes, uh, let's do it. So, so let's take a look at subboom bass. I can just show you guys the different sections of okay. the synth and uh, take it from there. So here it is, subboom bass. We have sound. Um, the oscillator section actually has two parts. They're the same. You have two oscillators, one and two, and you can turn them on and off using these little switches over here. And you can uh, select the waveforms. So like Dave, you know, showed before, we have all these signs of, you know, uh, different kinds of waveforms. So if you go in here, there's a drop-down menu that lets us choose. So you have a sine wave. And uh, here's a saw wave, right? Mm -hmm. So all the different waveforms, and obviously you can adjust the pitch and tuning and stuff like that, just like any other instrument. And it goes to the filter section. I'm jumping ahead of oscillator 2 here, going to the filter, and uh, I have a low pass filter selected. Uh, they're sure about uh, filter slopes and stuff, right? Yeah, I think so. 24 must, dB, yeah. 6 dB, right? Yeah. Okay. So you can select any kind of filter in here, low pass, high pass. Right now it's on a 24 dB, you know, low pass, which is pretty steep filtering. Right? And I'm moving the cutoff. You can see it getting brighter and darker. And then you have an envelope section here just to control the filter. So this is modulating the filter. So all the envelopes will have some kind of an intensity knob associated with it, which kind of says how much is the envelope affecting it, right? So if I turn up the intensity, if I can see. Oops. Wow. Let me put this to polyphonic mode which means I can play chords. You can see it like rising up, right? So that's the envelopes controlling it. When we get to a second synth, I'm going to explain more what each different thing does. Now, after the filter, I'm getting into the amp section where we control the volume and stuff. And then we have the second kind of modulator called the LFO in here, which I can assign to any parameter. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me stop you. So LFOs can control a number of things, right? Absolutely. So, so if we have the LFO controlling the volume, it would be wah, yeah. so yeah. it would be a you tremolo, tremolo effect. Yeah. Or if we had it controlling other things. Um, why don't we take a break here, sure. and, and, and this, this will be the end of part one, and then we'll come back and, and um, uh, I know you're a beast with massive, so oh, <laughs> so let's uh, let's let's stop here, guys. Um, rewind this. There's some great information, and, and go and search some of these terms yourself. Come back and join us for part two of this. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. Part two uh, with my friend Apu Krishnan, the professor, um, engineer, producer, <laughs> songwriter, teacher. <laughs> Uh, hopefully you, you 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 checked out part one of this. This is uh, we're talking about uh, synthesizer applications and concepts for plugins. We're not trying to teach you how to work a synthesizer and program a synthesizer, but there's a lot of plugins that are using synthesizer terms and technologies and and concepts. So we're going to go a little deeper today. Apu, I see you got massive on the screen. Yes, we do. Uh, what are you going to show us? I'm just going to show you like applications of stuff that we just spoke okay. about. So Massive, I'm sure everybody heard of it. It's not just an angry synth. It's got a lot underneath. Uh, it's it's uh, more of everything, I would say. Three oscillators, two filters, amplifier section, and a ton of modulation stuff to assign. Four envelopes and uh, four LFOs. So um, let's start by talking about the envelopes. Okay. Let's uh, try to make a kick drum by assigning a pitch envelope onto like a sine wave. So okay. we can hear I'm the waveforms too. So before we start anything on a synth, you should reset the patch. Otherwise you get into a lot of trouble. 
will let me. Cool. So I'm going to select a sine wave. That, that's good enough. It's good to have a little edge. I'm going to bring it down to kick drum level. Oh, that's heavy. Low. Now I'm going to assign an envelope. So this blue area here is the envelopes. And you can assign by clicking and dragging this crosshair onto the slot. I'm going to push the envelope's intensity up. Like I said before, everything's got an intensity. So I get laser beamy sound. Uh, what, we, what we're hearing is what we're seeing on that, that, is that what we're seeing? Exactly what we're seeing. Okay, so the sound Pitch goes is going up slowly. Out and then it's okay, coming down, okay. right? Oh, cool. And uh, if I increase the attack, we'll hear the difference. Right? That sounds like, uh, no, I was going to say, <laughs> that sounds like somebody's kick drums, but I, I can't do that to my friend. <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so in here, there is no sustain marked, but as you can see, this is like the decay area. So if I bring the decay level down, it's kind of like bringing sustain down. That's more like a kick drum, but we can fine tune it. So now I'm going to go to the amp envelope. Remember, this was the pitch envelope for the oscillator. Now, number four here is already assigned to the amp section. Now so what are we trying to do? Just make the kick drum a little bit more tighter. Oh. oh. Do okay, the same so, thing there so, so the okay. note doesn't hang around. Okay, so you're just, you're just telling... You're just telling, when you hit the key, you're, you're, you're just telling it to drop the volume at drop a certain point. Drop the volume point. at a okay. point. So you have that, right? Right. So we have an envelope triggering both the oscillator pitch and the amplifier. Okay. And you get a kick. So that's some of the things you can do in Timeless too, right? Absolutely. By Fab Filter. Okay. You can control like uh, uh, delay frequencies and stuff like that with envelopes. You can create ducking effects if you play at a chord and the taps come in only slightly later. Oh, gotcha. You know. Okay. So there's a lot of applications. So that was an envelope controlling the pitch as well as the amplifier. Mm -hmm. Get a kick drum. So now something more rhythmic. I would say let's use an LFO. I'm going to reset the sound. This time, I'm going to use white noise. So in here, I have white noise. Sounds like static. I can just use an LFO in here and then assign that to my filter here. Put a little pass on it. And get you the beautiful ring. And obviously I can just sing it to anything I want. Cool. So I'm going to change up the oscillator waveform a little bit into a different noise. And switch this guy up into a performer where I could get like my own hi-hat pattern. Again, if I start drawing curves and stuff, get like interesting sounds out of it in like context mm -hmm. in a rhythmic scenario. And that basic yeah. pattern can control anything you send anything. from the oscillator. Absolutely. I can have this control like the pitch of an oscillator too. It might be a little freaky of a sound. Gotcha. It could be anything, you know? I think so, I heard that on a Skrillex record. Yeah, it could be Diplo or Skrillex or anything you want. My so, apologies to Skrillex. <laughs> There's a lot you can do. I'm just showing very basic possibilities. Okay. Explain resonance again to me. Cool. Resonance is that boost we give on that particular cutoff frequency. Okay. And how can you make that move over time with, with, a, with an LFO or something? Okay. So let's actually do this. And uh, put a basic filter sweep in here. Let me turn that off that way. <laughs> 
Now so, this LFO. So, so am I am, am I picturing the cutoff on a on a on a on a high pass filter mm -hmm. uh, moving, but you're not moving. It is moving based on the LFO information you're feeding it, and then the LFO information is being treated by the envelope. Or did I get that wrong? So the, uh, no, you're right. There is two things going on here. One is if you bypass this for a second. One is a basic filter sweep happening here, right? So uh, I have envelope number one controlling my cutoff, and it's just a ramp. I'm just getting a mm -hmm. big rise. Now, the resonance can change too with it. I'm going to use the LFO in here to change the resonance. So, so, so that 16th so, node variation. So if, 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 if here's my my filter and then the resonance is this part, mm -hmm. you're, you're making this go up and down? Up and down, oh, exactly, okay. in 16 notes. Okay. Variations. That's deep. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Cool. Can't believe I learned so. something. Um, so tell me about um, ring modulation. What's different? You don't, have to, you don't have to give me an audio, but yeah. what's different about ring modulation as opposed to just regular modulation? Well, ring modulation is where you use one oscillator to control the frequencies of another one. I'm not going to the physics of it because you can explain it better than yeah. me. So in my experience, you can create metallic sounds out of it. So okay. I would say if you take a simpler sound, like a sine wave or a triangle wave, and you apply a ring modulation to it, you get a lot of high frequency harmonics. Mm -hmm. So kind of like a ring okay. guitar pedal. So we've got an oscillator here and mm -hmm. then we've got like what you just described. We've got another oscillator here that's gonna control this oscillator. Mm -hmm. Now, what's this oscillator doing that, that gives it the sound? Well, uh, actually, it takes the pitch of both frequency of both oscillators and does some math on it, right? Oh, it's, a, and it's creates, adding and subtracting. Exactly, oh, exactly. That's what's okay. Happening. So that makes sense because yeah. on the on the Rob Pappen that we showed, yeah. uh, you can have one oscillator control another pretty easy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, I got you. Here. You got sure. time for a couple more oh, questions? Of on um, on the envelope follower, what does that mean? Uh, basically, if you have like a parameter changing, you can have an envelope kind of um, changing with it. Let me put it in a better way. Wah wah pedal oh, okay. would be an example. And like the frequency is kind of changing, and you mm -hmm. can have an envelope sweep to it. And and when we say an X Y controller, mm -hmm. there's a pattern. That's con that, that on a vertical axis mm -hmm. that's that controls one thing, mm -hmm. and on a horizontal axis controls another. Yes. And 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 the X Y this would be the Y this would be the X, mm -hmm. and as you move around that imaginary square, yeah. you get varying amounts depending on which one you're close Absolutely. to. Absolutely. And how do you tend to use that? I would say, for starters, you can assign the X to the cutoff of a filter, oh, okay. and uh, peak or resonance can be on the Y. Okay. And can you control the movement by an LFO? Absolutely. Um, well, X, Y, you could. You can use MIDI controllers, like a Chaos Pad would be oh, okay. more fun, I would say. Okay. Especially if you have uh, delay taps, for example, okay. and, I don't know, delay feedback or uh, cutoff frequency of the filter of the delay. Okay. You can get more interesting things by just moving your hand around a Chaos Pad. Okay. Um, um, obviously, you can assign those things to sliders too if you want to do that. Gotcha. Is um, is there anything I, that we've that we've missed? I mean, that's no, pretty much the basics, so. right? No, I, I really think it's the basics. There's one more thing. Just okay. remember, you can do an X Y. It's called morphing. Oh. If you take a synth like FM8, you can actually change a whole bunch of parameters and put that as four different quadrants on an X Y, mm -hmm. and you can move around, and the sound actually completely changes from one to the other, okay. could be very, very interesting. There's a lot of plugins now that just give you a simple way to morph, just from, yes. from one preset to another and stuff. Okay, guys, I know that's pretty basic. We, we, we tried to go fast. Um, uh, this is gonna require a lot of homework on your part, but, uh, but I think we got a couple of things going here that get us a start, and, and, and that start is just understanding that this isn't, this isn't that difficult to understand. It's just the patience to dive in and learn it. Now, I cheated. I got my friend Apu to come by and show it to me. You got to do a little more work, okay? Next time.
Man, nobody learns more from these internal layers than me, particularly in this one. Uh, it was actually something I wanted to learn and share with you. Uh, we're gearing up, everything's getting close. The award show is just a handful of days away. Be sure and say hello to Herb and I when you're there. We always enjoy seeing you guys. So long. See ya.